Woof. Bunny, Bunny, it's definitely happening. Okay, he's going to go to the cupboard and get my ball. Get my ball, get my ball. I said, cupboard, told you, what did I say? Okay, get it right, go to the top, get my ball. This is the ball you're looking for. At the top, that's right. Yes, I look up, get the ball, that's a whistle. That's, that's definitely a whistle. You could try again, you could do better, okay? You have serious problems. You've literally just got over the shakes. Yeah, they're not shake, that, I just pant. Right, human, get it right. Hiya, 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 get the ball, not the poo bags. Okay, we need poo bags, that's fine. I just, just, you go one more time, no, no, don't shut, don't shut the door. <laughs> Stupid collie. What is the point in life? He's opening the door again. Yes, yes, that's the ball. Yeah, I've got the ball, human, good job. We are going to go and chase the ball. Don't get too excited, boys. Well, what are you talking about? Still not flinging it. Oh. Hello. So we're about three weeks into Flingless February now, and uh, I thought it was about time to get Aaron's toy back out again. And with that, I thought I would explain how we can use the power of the toy to our advantage, um, but not giving in to temptation of flinging it. Very kindly, I had a note from Matt, whose uh, idea of Flingless February is on the last video I made, in which throwing your food isn't classified as flinging. So I can take my shame back again, which is quite good. The thing which I was thinking about with our toy and how we can utilize it in a different way is that all the previous times that we've flung our toy, we have kind of like built more and more value within it. The toy that we fling the most often is definitely being supercharged. Every single time we've chucked it in the past and our dog's gone chasing after it, we've added value to this toy. We've made it more important or at least more exciting and engaging. So it's interesting that we can now take that toy out and about with us and utilize the conditioned excitement that we have created around the toy in a different way. Apparently I smell, says Barney, who's gone to the other sofa. The game which we're gonna be playing is simply hide and seek. And here's the three basic steps to it. Step one, get your toy, and tantalize your dog into thinking that you're going to fling it, eh Aaron? No, that's not step one. Real step one is, step one, ask your dog to sit and stay. Step two, take the toy away from the dog and pretend to hide it in several locations around where you're working with your dog and actually hide it in one of those places. Step three, you come back to your dog and you send them out to go get it. It can be as easy or as complex as you need this exercise to be. If your dog struggles to actually send and to find their article, then make it relatively easy to start off with. And then eventually you just build up and build up the level of difficulty. <laughs> Interestingly, Aaron's got a decent sit stay. However, putting him behind a tree and then going and hiding the toy was too much excitement and too much uh, anticipation for him to be able to maintain his sit stay. Something that we are now working on my point being, you need to know how much or how little self-control your dog has. when you look at this game you're thinking oh, I've got to go train my, my dog to sit stay and in a busy world you're like ain't nobody got time for that then don't worry just ask somebody to hold your dog whilst you go and put the toy out there or tether them to either a fence or a tree as long as they are comfortable with that uh, happening uh, and place the toy out and come back and release them to go and get it you can see me out in the field here discussing how I would start the sit stay process but I'd be doing it in a household environment or somewhere very calm and basic first, and then stepping it to outside. But the basic principles are the same. Ask your dog to sit, move away from them. If they stay in the sit, come back and reinforce that behavior. The busier the environment you work with your dog, one, the harder it can be for them to focus, but two, the better the hunt can be to find the toy itself. So, 
I'm going to first start by doing a bit of stay training with Aaron and then when he's looking really solid I'll start putting out the toy and getting him to go find it. So sit. Good. Good. Sit. Good. Break. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Aaron, up. Sit. Good. 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 Sit. Good. Good. Wait, one. Aaron, fetch it. Relatively simple. There's my good boy. Well done. What a good lad. Did you get your toy? Did you? Did you get it? Who's a good puppy? Give. Good boy. Should we do it again? Eventually this re that I'm doing of Aaron will disappear. Good. Wait. Seems to be a nice little distraction down there. Hide it down there now. So I've thrown it out this time. Instead of going back and then feeding him, I'm going to come back and ask him to go fetch it. Fetch it. <laughs> Which he had. Go puppy! Well done! What a good boy! What a good boy you are! The caveat that I've got to put in is that your dog might be absolutely fine to do their sit stay without the presence of the highly motivating toy. But with the toy there, it might be too much. Kind of like Aaron and going behind the tree, that was just too much distraction. So all I would say with that one is either use a lower grade excitement toy um, or practice more on the sit stays without the toy present and then build it up. It's a super basic game, however, Aaron really enjoyed it and I could see his excitement levels whilst he played it. Uh, it was fascinating for me being on week three of this journey to see actually how some of his uh, fizzy excitement came back simply with the presence of the toy, but I don't think that's a bad thing if we're use, utilizing it every now and then. This is a really simple game but the idea that I'm really trying to get across is the value that we've instilled in the toy that we've flung all those times and how important it has been. We always talk about repetitions in dog training, but why not utilize it to our own advantage in a different way? bonus exercise which I'll talk about today which is really really interesting is I took Barney to where I get my uh, dog food from and I looked around all of the, the areas with the treats in them. Now he's uh, pretty good at essentially a leave it cue so don't be practicing this if you don't have a good leave it cue but it was lovely to watch Barney be able to move between all of the uh, things that are on dog height that are completely open um, for dogs to get and um, but allowing him to just scent them all just take it all in. It was really, really nice to watch him just smell it all. I made sure I bought a few things just so that, you know, I didn't just take advantage of the lovely uh, venue. But uh, I was getting my dog food from them anyway, so I'm sure they wouldn't have minded. But my point being is look for those interesting areas and environments which your dogs would love to spend a bit of time scenting with. And if you have got a good leave it cue, you know, allow them to engage with the environment a bit more. And if you see them about to overstep the mark, just ask them to leave it. And then, and then carry on. All right. What oh, you got your collie tongue sticking out? Is that a little collie tongue? Good boy. I think that's about it. If you have been watching this video, thank you very much. If you've been following our little journey, uh, let us know in the comments how your journey is going on. Uh, otherwise, as always, have a good dog day. Bye, guys. Oh, is that the spot? Is that the spot? Is that the spot? Oh, he's a good puppy. He's a good boy. He's a good puppy. Wolf.